we are live how's it going guys james here and today i want to show you my saint patrick's day pipe uh I, I i was trying to do it on saint patrick's day but i was super busy and so finally i have a i have some time where i can show you all of my my pipes well actually my chris morgan pipes but specifically my green pipe we're gonna wait for some more people to come on the, the live feed here hmm mm hmm oh we got one person watching yeah, for whatever reason, I set the live feed on the computer, but when I go on my phone, it doesn't show that same video, so I have to like redo it on my phone. For whatever reason, it's kind of, it's it's a pain in the butt, but it works. We got three people watching. Don't forget a thumbs up so uh, more people can see this video. Let's see. I think it's working. So I think we're good. Oh, we got a thumbs up. Okay, so someone's watching. Yeah, so I wanted to show you guys like my St. Patrick's Day setup, I guess. I don't know what the word is, but like every year I, I smoke the same green pipe that I dyed with leather dye, and it turned out pretty great. And then I did like a, uh, a lacquer, um, what's it called? I think it's lacquer, yeah. So we got five people watching. What? Right when we hit 10 people, I'll start, you know, showing the pipes and stuff like that. I just don't want to keep redoing it. I found that I have to like, you know, answer the same questions, you know, over and over. So if people can watch, uh, then I can show. Yeah, leather dye. Okay, so I found out that leather dye works pretty well on briar and a lot of pipe makers use leather dye. Um, I guess it soaks into the wood just, you know, the right amount and uh, it has a deep color to it and so yeah i use leather dye let me show you guys okay so i'm a huge fan of chris morgan i've got a lot of chris morgan pipes over the years so chris morgan makes affordable pipes uh he i believe he has a factory in italy and then he ships them here to to be sold so definitely check out chris morgan so he has a, a few different lines this is the bones series bones pipes are cheaper and they're kind of like unfinished. But here's this Bones pipe. So you can see this I've had, I don't know, a pretty long time. It's a pretty traditional bent billiard shape. And um, you can see it's taken on some color over the years. And the top gets a little burnt, you know, from just from smoking it. And it's a pretty good sized bowl. I mean, you know, this is a good medium to deep bowl. And so the Bones pipes are great because they're kind of raw, they're kind of unfinished, and you can kind of customize it. They have a light wax coating that you can remove very easily. And they smoke great. Um, they have a plastic bit here. I think it's plastic. So it's cheaper, but um, it works very, very well. So, yeah, and the, the fit and finish on these things, I mean, it's nice and tight. And um, I think this is plastic. Maybe this is... Maybe it's not plastic. It feels pretty high quality. I don't know. It's not like super high end, but this is a great place to start. You know, if you're starting pipe smoking, check out the Chris Morgan's Bones series. And then let's see here. Here's my other Bones pipe, that the one I was talking about, my green pipe for St. Patrick's Day. And this is a little less traditional. Check that out. It's sort of like a... I don't know what you call that, like an ants, bulldog sort of shape. And I dyed it green with uh, some leather dye. So leather dye, I guess, is what a lot of people use. And then I finished this pipe. I kind of sanded it, made it look kind of rustic. And then I finished it in some, uh, I think it was just regular lacquer. I forget, maybe it was, I forget what kind of lacquer, but completely ready to go. It took, you know, a day just to kind of do it. And I think it looks pretty darn good. Some quick buffing made it kind of like semi shiny. So this is a just a, the perfect, you know, St. Patrick's pipe. Kind of small, good travel pipe. And so I, you know, I didn't mind experimenting on this thing. And um, for whatever reason, it just looks, it has dimension to it, you know. It's not just solid green. There's actually like um, more dimension. Yeah, it looks pretty good, you know. This is like a great, um, you know, uh, disc golfing pipe. It's small, easy, you can put it in your pocket. You know what I mean? Put this right here. 
you're good to go. And this is the kind of pipe that, um, you know, it's you don't really see this shape very often. So it's very, it's already unique and it's already affordable. So um, yeah, so this is what we're gonna load up. I wanna show you guys, here's Chris Morgan's Blackjack series. Blackjack, oh hey, what's up guys? Never tried the pipe, scars only for me. Well definitely, try, check out this pipe. Oh wait a minute, oh, I'll show this one last. This one's my favorite. So Blackjack pipes are a little higher end and they're kind of finished nicely. They have a little silver on them or some sort of metal. So this is another unique shape. See that? How oh, it's a cool bit. A little. I don't think this is real. Maybe it's real silver. I don't think so. But it's a nice fitting there. So this would be like a you know Rhodesian bulldog. I think it's a bulldog. I forget bulldogs versus uh, you know the other one. Um, they're very similar in shape, basically. So anyway, this is. A reverse calabash. See, reverse calabash means that there's a chamber right here. It's an air chamber, so the, the smoke can condense and cool in here before it goes in your mouth. So this, even though it's really small, this is a really good uh, cool smoking pipe. You get a lot of good flavors out of this pipe. And the bowl shape on this one's kind of unique too. But um, that's a really good little smoking pipe. And let's see here, we have another blackjack. Smoked a long time, smoked a long live. Lived the king today from Pravada. Dude, Pravada's killer. I was, I was just talking to the owner, um, forgot his name, but I guess he's got a new website. So here is another ants sort of shape. This is a beautiful blackjack pipe. And as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for smaller pipes recently. And um, I just think this is really cool. And this, this one feels great in the hand. Some pipes, they just fit great in the hand. And so it's a very tactile sort of thing. This has a decent amount of weight to it. And it just kind of feels, I don't know, it just feels right. So there's that one. And then last but not least is my favorite Chris Morgan pipe. I think this one's called the Timberwolf. Check that out. Huge pipe. It's, uh, they call it the Timberwolf because it's like a timber... Timberman pipe, like a, you know, a longer shank, but it also is, you know, it's got like a diamond shank to it, diamond shape. And man, it's really cool. This is this is a number 22 Timberwolf. So you're kind of combining two different pipe shapes into one. I thought that was really cool. And um, it's just, it, it smokes great. Nice long bowl, so you have a lot of flavor coming through the tobacco. This is cool. But today we're going to smoke St. Patrick's pipe. And uh, my favorite, people always ask me, what's your favorite pipe tobacco? It's this right here, H&H &H Fusilier's Ration. I was saying, uh, I was calling, I was saying it wrong. I was, I'm a dumb American. So I was saying Fusilier, but it's actually Fusilier, which is like a type of soldier. So this is my favorite overall pipe tobacco. It comes, it's like an English blend, it comes in these big, flakes and it's very it's crumble it's a crumbly cake and it's kind of like an English blend but it also has these sort of I don't know like licorice sort of scent to it it's a very funky flavor I love it it's kind of savory sweet and um, I just this stuff is good so that's typically what I what I tell people my favorite is okay we got questions here uh, do, how old were you when you had your first cigar? Um, I think I was 17 or 18. Uh, it was a, my first cigar was a crappy one, but um, I had my first like good good cigar at like 18 or 19. Yep, something like that. I think this stuff is a little dry. I like to kind of rub it out a little bit, kind of break it apart. It's a little bit dry though. Let's see, I got more questions here. Yeah, these pipes are very classy and they're very affordable. I don't get pipes at all, but good for you for enjoying what you like. Yeah, so they're, they're definitely different than cigars. And I don't really do a lot of pipe videos anymore because I was doing like way too many things, you know, between cigars and this and that and pipes and then and mattresses and uh, you know so it really it's just there's a lot going on so yep and I don't really smoke a pipe much in Arizona I think it's just because it's warmer here and 
I tend to like colder climates for smoking pipes. That's typically what I do. Here's my little pipe tool. Basically, it's a candle lighter. But then you got your tamper over here, check tool, and it's all on a lighter leash. These are called lighter leashes, and they keep your lighter nice and you know on your hip at all sides. Almost 70 of Virginia have to work on AP government homework. Oh, sucky homework, man. Well, 70 degrees is beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Let's see here. We got more questions. Dude, the weather is killer here. It's like 85. It's kind of hot. Actually, this is the first hot day. I would consider this the first hot day. That's what I would call this. Arizona's first sort of hot day. Okay, am I missing questions? Um, jealous of the crumble cake, only had Carter Hall at the moment. Carter Hall is a very affordable, uh, I think it's a Burley, and it's like a drugstore blend. A lot of people love it. I'm not a fan of Burley for some reason, I don't know why. But if it's what you got and you like it, that's all that matters. It's like free it's kind of it's kind of windy today. Normally it's not windy here. Okay, so this is the pipe tobacco I'm smoking. It's from Hearth and Home. Uh, I've got a tin of it somewhere. Here's what it's called. I always keep tins of it because it's my favorite. It's called Hearth and Homes Fusilier's Ration. And you can read the back here. Fusilier's Ration is a crumble cake, a good amount of Latakia, fragrant Orientals, bright Virginia, a traditionally British combination of flavorings finishes the blend. So I think British flavorings, uh, I guess, is the licorice flavoring, I guess. It's very faint though. But this is definitely a traditional blend. And let's see, this made in Pennsylvania. This is good stuff. I don't know, it's like nine, ten bucks a tin. You know, you just buy like ten of them and then just store them away so they age really well. kind of hard to light a pipe and I'm also talking that's another reason why I don't do a lot of pipe videos is it's not really natural with the pipe because you have to kind of manage the pipe a lot mm-hmm I got some good glad I have it mm-hmm Orange bitters. Oh, windy. I'm trying to smoke a pipe and get my drink going. I'm trying to check messages. When the when's the next cigar lounge tour coming, dude? Uh, I want to do Tim's. I want to do Tim's video, um, and I want to do Zeal Cigars video. I got a new gimbal stabilizer, so I can do like smooth walking shots into buildings. And um, my hope is to do it 
I don't know. I, I really want to do it. It's just things keep popping up, you know? Mm-hmm. Normally when I, when I pour scotch, I let it kind of rest. So that's what you'll see me do. If you guys don't know this, I always put a little orange bitters in a lot of my whiskeys. I don't know why, I just love it. And then this is my palate cleanser, Kirkland's Sparkling Water with Lime. Uh, this is like LaCroix, but it's half the price, and I think it tastes better actually. So you gotta love LaCroix. Do you, do you guys drink sparkling water or seltzer water? Um, let me know because it seems to be a, a good way to not drink pop or soda because there's no sugar in this. It's got some flavoring, but it's just water. Yep, let's see here. I might even get more whiskey in it out of the ice because it's kind of hot today. Surprisingly warm, that's what it is. Okay, uh, this wind is driving me nuts. Any more questions? Let's see here. 13 people watching. What are you guys doing today? Let me know right down there. Hey, tea and tobacco, we were supposed to do a video. That's Eric, if you guys didn't know. Yeah, I drink either grapefruit or raspberry lime seltzer. It's, I mean, it's good stuff, man. Uh, Pete says he drinks the Zero Fiji Apple. I've never had that one. Actually, I like Fiji water, but it's so expensive. I feel weird buying it. Um, Cody's talking about stuff, says, yes, so good to keep healthy. I love clear American seltzer wa water. Huh, it looks, it looks pretty good, sounds good. Hey, Kay Barry, what's up? How's it going, man? Yeah, so if, if you guys didn't know, we were supposed to do a live video with me and Eric from Tobacco and Tea, or Tea and Tobacco. Right now he's super sick, so maybe we'll do it in a week or two. I hope you get better, buddy. Uh, ZA says, Eye of the Shark. Uh, I, yeah, what about it? I ha I've, I've had it, I think I've had it. I did a video on it. It's a really good cigar. Um, I don't know if it deserves Cigar of the Year, but I'm playing S Sekiro for PS4. Huh. And let's see here, oh, where's the Nuggets? Hey, what's up, how's it going, man? We're smoking a nice St. Patrick's Day pipe here. And Pete says, I'm having a Cornelius and Anthony Ariel second with some coffee. Dude, that sounds killer. I was going to make coffee. I instead ended up making some Glenn Levitt. Let's see here. Big shout out from... Oh, do you know if you can smoke thyme out of a pipe? I'm sure you could smoke a lot of stuff out of a pipe. Um, go for it. Uh, hey, big shout out from Ireland. Hey, how's it going? This one's for you. It's my, it's my green pipe for St. Saint, Saint Paddy's Day. And uh, this is kind of a tradition for me every year. Normally I smoke it on St. Patrick's Day, but today is the day. So I dyed it green with some leather dye. That's, I guess that's what pipe makers do. But unfortunately I don't have any Irish whiskey. I've got scotch. So not exactly, it's not exactly the same thing here. But what's it like in Ireland right now? Barrow Donovan, is that how you say your name? Barrow Donovan. I'll probably end up showing you guys my watch collection too. I brought up my watches. People on Instagram always talk about watches with me. And um, so I figured maybe I'll talk more about it if you guys want. Uh, cold, I bet it's cold. It's, I feel like it's just a cold place. In my mind when I think of, you know, when I think of, I guess, most of the UK and Ireland, I think cold, wet, dark, and lots of grass. Here, it's like the exact opposite. It's always sunny, hot, and there's like no green. And it's just, 
it's kind of like the complete opposite really uh, let's see here cold and raining in Illinois that's where my that's where my family is hey James uh, this is Pete silly question but I really want to know can you smoke mint out of a pipe heard you can and it's good have you tried it I've smoked mint out of a uh, out of a pipe before I'd, I've actually done a video on it I don't know if you're being funny or not but I got a ton of funny comments on that video Grayson how's it going man Mm -hmm. We're enjoying a nice pipe for St. Patrick's Day. Have you ever heard of Roma Craft Tobacco? Tobacco cigar. Yes, I have definitely heard of Roma Craft Tobacco. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a Roma Craft cigar, um, but I know they're good. So I'm sure, I'm assuming the tobacco would be good too. Hey, greetings, Michael. How's it going? Grayson, I'm doing great. Um, I'm, do I'm enjoying the weather outside before it gets way too hot. I miss Fusilier's, Fusilier's ration, killer stuff. I mean, this is, this is the good balance between sweet and savory and smoky and, and it pairs well with a lot of whiskeys, so. Oh, tea and tobacco. Eric says, what, is, what does Eric say? Eric says he only has one watch I actually care about. My grandfather's got a Seiko Diver watch for his 25 years of service in 1980. It survived a house fire, wow. Uh, my dad found it, found it out on the lawn. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of, here's like my little Harbor Freight box full of watches. And, um, Basically, all I did was I just kind of took out the foam. I need to get some rolls to wrap the watches on. But uh, let's see here. Today I'm wearing, this is actually a Seiko. I'm a huge Seiko fan. So if you guys don't know this, I'm a big Seiko fan. This is a Seiko Diver watch like you're talking about. And this is the SKX 009. 009 means it's, um, they call this a Pepsi dial because it's red and blue. And it's faded very, very nicely. I did the, the coffee the coffee mod. I made it kind of look like aged, aged loom on there. This is like my favorite watch. This is just a killer watch. Uh, let's see here. Oh, so this is the answer. What is the best and most affordable way to get into pipe smoking? So I answered this right when I started the video. Um, I'm a huge fan of Chris Morgan's pipes. I got a lot of them here. And he's got a series called the Bones Pipes. And that's what this is. This is a Bones Pipe that I've dyed green. And so they're very, very good, affordable pipes. And they're a killer way to start. That or a corn cob pipe is great. So that's what I tell people. You know, get a, get a cheap briar. Or a corn cob. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, get some, get some tobacco, buy you a few tins, um, buy some bulk tobacco, you know, and just kind of experiment. There's aromatics and there's, there's English blends. I would buy all of it. I would just buy two or three of each thing because it's cheap. Mmm. Cody says, what do you think about echo drives? Echo drives are... I believe they're a Seiko watch that is the watch itself, I believe is, it's very unique movement. I think they run off of like solar and battery or, or, or I think they're like automatic, but they like last forever somehow. Um, I've heard great things about them. I don't have one, but um, they're very cool. I know that. I mean, Seiko is really cutting the edge technology with that. They, I know they last forever. Uh, let's see here. I'm actually thinking about buying a mahogany church warden pipe. Do you do pipe reviews? Yes, I, I used to do a lot of pipe reviews. I like pipes a lot. And um, I've got a big church warden uh, stem for a corn cob pipe. It's one of the best smoking pipes I've ever had. 
yeah, so tea and tobacco says you got to sample, sample, sample. Buy an ounce of this, buy an ounce of that, buy an ounce of this, buy an ounce of that. And before you know it, you're going to find like your top five. And this is always top five for me. And, um, you know, you, you'll find brands that you like. When, you buying, when you're buying pipe tobacco, it's just like cigars where you tend to prefer like one brand. And then within that brand, you can kind of figure out what you like. So for me with cigars, I love Padron cigars. And so within the Padron line, um, there's, I don't think I, 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 I pretty much like every Padron I've ever had. So there's just different, different flavors within, you know, different variations within that brand. So I found the brand and then I, now I know, okay, I like this, this, and this, you know, I like the 26s and I love, you know, the 2000s for a cheaper cigar, you know, so stuff like that. Yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So the Citizen Watch, so the Eco Drives are Citizen Watches powered by light. That the the actual dial of the Citizen Watch is um, uh, it's some sort of solar panel. So it actually sucks in the light and it powers it. Yeah. So here's my here's my watches here. I've got this was one of the first watch. My wife bought this for me. It looks like a Bell and Ross. But it is actually an Invicta. And I'm not a huge fan of Invicta, but this is a very high quality watch. I don't wear it because my, my wrists are so skinny that I found it's not very comfortable. But this still really means a lot to me because it is, it was very nice of her to get that, you know. This is the, when we didn't hardly have any money, this was what she got me. So very cool. And it just kind of gives me good memories. Uh, let's see here. One day I'll own a Bell and Ross. Here is, if you guys watch my Instagram, I post a lot on this one. This is a Hamilton Seabreeze. So uh, it's an old watch that's mechanical only. You have to wind it. But it has a lot of charm and I put it on this Perlon strap. And let's see here. I've also got a Hamilton GGW113. This is like an 80s watch. Normally, they made them in the 60s for soldiers and going to Vietnam, but this one was built in the 80s and um, It has a creamy loomy dial and kind of a nice little bubble and uh, It looks great. And I just think this looks super simple and clean and nice and it's quite small But I have got skinny wrists so I can pull it off So that's that uh, Let's see here I got my Seiko SKX 013. I'm a huge fan of this because it's a mid-size diver. This is like 38 mils instead of the 42 mils. So although they look very similar in size, you know, four millimeters makes a difference on your wrist. So this is what I tell people, like get yourself a Seiko SKX 013 if you have a skinny wrist, you know. I think, man, the black looks good too. So these are like my, you know, the, I, you just, you can't go wrong with one of these. Uh, let's see here. I got, um, I'm really into modifying watches. So I, I found this Invicta that was modded. And then what I did was I add some coffee to it and kind of, I kind of made it look old. So it's got like this sort of Tudor Black Bay look to it. And it's just an Invicta, but it has a Seiko NH35 movement. So that means it's hacking. So when you pull it out, the second hand stops. And um, it's got a great power reserve. It's pretty accurate. And um, so this watch, hacking, hand winding, great automatic watch for like 60 bucks. And I think it just looks amazing for 60 bucks. This is my beater watch that I could literally do anything with and I don't care. So if, if you guys can't tell, I'm a huge fan of dive watches. So maybe one day I'll own a Rolex. Um, so this is a Sterling watch. I don't really wear this much, but it is really cool. My mom gave it to me as a gift. It's a skeleton watch, so you can see right through it. And man, it is very unique. You don't really see watches like this. So um, it, it's actually a pretty high quality watch. I mean, it winds very nicely. But I just don't wear it much. I don't know. It's just not really my style, I guess. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm not a big fan of gold. I don't, I don't know what it is. But it's really cool because the movement 
It's very, it's just weird looking, isn't it? Okay, so I'm a huge fan of Tudor watches. So I got a Tudor homage. This was a couple hundred bucks and it just looks amazing. It's a kit with a nice ETA movement in there. ETA is a Swiss company that makes movements. Killer watch. So basically I, I, I had to get a blue diver and a red diver and that's what these do for me. So this is probably one of the highest quality watches I own. And um, yeah, it just, it just looks good. So that's pretty much it. If you guys are into watches, I like talking about watches. Uh, let's see here. Did I miss questions? Uh, do, do, I missed a lot of questions. Do, 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 do. What about aligned Meerschaum pipe? Those are good. I've never had one, but I guess they serve their purpose. Uh, let's see here. I have a fossil that winds itself from your movement of walking around. Yeah, so the ones that wind themselves, those are the automatic watches. Very nice. Uh, they're citizen watch. What about buying a pipe bowl pre-carbonized? Uh, it doesn't matter. If you buy a pipe that already has a carbon lining on it, it doesn't matter. I've noticed you break in a pipe after four or five bowls anyway. So I think the whole idea of a carbon buildup or cake buildup on your pipe, I think that's just kind of overrated anyway. You know, generally, if your pipe tobacco is too wet, you're going to have this groggy smoking experience. So really, it's about, I think, the quality of tobacco you're smoking versus the cake buildup and all of that. Um, I'm, I, I don't think it really matters that much. Oh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. G-Shocks are nice, dude. I think G-Shocks are killer. Um, I'm not a huge fan of digital watches, but I would definitely buy a G-Watch. They're super industrial and there's G watches with like barometers and you know, weird, uh, all kinds of stuff, you know, thermometers, barometers, this, that, this, and that, and the other. And so yeah, G watches are killer and they're super tough. Yes, I gave the blue watch a patina and I gave this watch a patina as well. Just a slight coffee patina. Uh, Okay, so Crazy Weasel, I like that name. He said, what's the best way to get into cigars? And the best way is just like pipes, try everything. People are gonna give you opinions and opinions are nice, but it's not always accurate for what you like or what you will like. So people will tell me, oh, you gotta get you gotta get this, you gotta get this, you gotta get... So, you know, I'll try those out, but often what you like is not what I like. So I would just try everything and kind of map out yourself what you like. You know, I know guys who hate scotch and they say, I'm never drinking scotch, I'm only bourbon. And so for a while, all I drank was bourbon and then I started trying scotch like a year or two ago. And all of a sudden I'm like, man, I like scotch. And um, it's different than bourbon. And it's a good, it's a good different, you know. So, um, so if I would have just listened to people, I would have never reached out and, you know. So just try everything. That's what I'm going to tell you. I, I actually like some port wine too. Port is pretty good. Uh, some some cab cabernet you know why um i'm a big fan of cabs and, and Mal malbecs you know and um i would have never tried red wine because most people i know don't really like wine uh let's see here uh, so with cigars try the try the big companies first you know try the uh you know the stuff that you see on the shelves a lot is like dominican cigars um Dominican Cohibas, Dominican Monte Cristos, you know, those are all like General Cigar Company and Altidus Cigar Company. Those are all like the standards. Try all that stuff and then try like some, you know, uh, stuff like Padron cigars. Try, um, you know, more boutique stuff. Um, you know, just try it all, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm a big fan of Drew Estate and Padron, so, you know, Try it all. 
Let's see here. Can you repeat the name of the pipe you recommended? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm a huge fan of Chris Morgan. Chris Morgan makes what are called Bones pipes and Blackjack pipes. So the Bones pipes are the cheaper pipes that are kind of like unfinished and they're a, great way, they're a great way to start. So this is a Bones pipe that I dyed green for St. Patrick's Day. This is a natural pipe and it takes on this nice color from your hand and from smoking it and it looks really cool. So these are like 30 bucks, 30 or 40 dollars and they smoke great. They're a killer way to start. And then you can kind of, you know, work your way up a little bit to more expensive pipes. You know, they're finished nicer. And then you can work your way up to even nicer pipes, you know, $100 pipes. You know, these are like $100 pipes. Very nice pipes, you know. Cool finish on them, unique shape. They smoke a little better maybe, you know. And um, so start with like, you know, a, a, a corn cob pipe and start with a bones pipe and work, work your way up from there. Most of my pipes are like 50 bucks or less. Crazy start, start mild and work your way up. That's what I'm saying, like start, start with cigars. You wanna start with like a lot of Dominican stuff. You know, start with a nice uh, Monte Cristo, you know, Connecticut thing or, you know, start with a Cohiba, you know, red dot, like it's all Dominican. So it's generally a little bit lighter Start there, start light, and then, you know, you can get into the heavier stuff. Cody. Cody asks, what is your favorite Marvel character? I'm a huge Marvel fan. I love talking about movies. I just saw Captain Marvel. It was okay. It was all right. Yeah. It was just okay. Um... My favorite Marvel character is probably Iron Man or Captain America. I don't know. I think I identify a lot with, with Iron Man, so maybe Iron Man. Are you going to join Luxury Cigar Club? Probably not, unless maybe they offer me some sort of you know discount or some sort of brand deal to do videos on it um generally i'm i'm getting too many cigars and not smoking enough and uh i have other stuff people send me for review you know what about pipe bowl pre-carbonization there's really no i don't really think that's a big deal if your pipe is not broken in, you smoke it, you get a little bit of that buildup of carbon, and maybe it smokes a little better. But in my opinion, it doesn't really matter if it comes that way or not. Um, it doesn't really matter. I, I think at the end of the day, it's more about the quality of high quality tobacco and high quality pipe than whether or not it has a carbon buildup. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, with a pipe, when you smoke a pipe, you're lighting the tobacco and you're just tasting it. You're sipping on it. You know, just like, just like with scotch or any drink, I'm just sipping. I kind of roll it around a little bit. You're not inhaling or anything. You can blow it out your nose if you want, like a cigar. Mm-hmm. I'm just just sipping. And then the green lime really helps kind of clean the palate. It's pretty good. Let's see here. Yeah, you don't oh yeah, this might be a good um uh if you were into like, you know, marijuana, you could I guess you could use that. <laughs> yeah. Um and because it's green, you know, there's a sort of a theme there, I guess. Um, uh, I, I don't do that, but 
Um, you could do that. <laughs> you could smoke in class. Uh, nope, you're not supposed to inhale tobacco. Yep. Yeah. You can still get nicotine in your mouth, and it's all about flavor. Yeah, nicotine is absorbed in your bloodstream through your through your mouth and through your lungs. I don't really do this for nicotine, though. Um, I just do it for flavor. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a great little pipe. It's a killer little pipe. You know, it's affordable. I can throw it in my pocket. Move on. And this is good tobacco too, you know. I don't know what it is, but this stuff right here is good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got more questions. My favorite meme is, um, uh, I was just talking about this today with my wife. My favorite meme is a video clip of this old man and it's like some sort of interview. And in, in, in the in the video clip, he, he goes, he goes like that and he like bites the air. And then someone took that clip and made it into a meme about like eating, you know, eating booty <laughs> or something like that. And my wife and I were just cracking up like butt muncher or something. And we were just, we were just, we saw that and we were just cracking up. So, you know. I don't know. It was it was it was inappropriate, but it was hilarious. Um, let's see here. Um, gra glass is better because resin herbs leave behind. It would be hard to clean the pipe out if you serve. Exactly. Um, tobacco is pretty easy. You just kind of use a pipe cleaner, and um, there's not really like any wax or resin or terpenes or anything. And um, you know the the wood absorbs a lot of gunk and with I'm assuming with herbs you want some of that gunk because that's you know that's what you want some of it you know let's see here I, oh oh okay uh, Michael says he just got his first pipe killer Michael let us know what you got Jordan says I smoke as a hobby it's relaxing it is v it, dude it is so relaxing uh, Zim says, just set it in a jar of Everclear after each toke. But yeah, I'm not sure if that would degrade the pipe faster. Maybe that's why glass is better. Yeah, I guess that's why glass is better. Um, I know some people, um, when you go to like, to like a, when you go to a smoke shop, you know, they sell like little mini corn cobs and they tell me that people buy those for weed, um, so maybe you could do that cheaper than glass maybe if you're on a budget i guess you guys have you noticed that every single time we do a video someone ends up talking about weed i'm just saying like i we always talk about it somehow i don't get it I figured I put it on ice because it's kind of getting kind of hot out here, and it might be kind of nice and ice, nice and ice. Okay, let's see here. Um, weed is great. That's why. <laughs> oh my gosh, Pete says I was just gonna say that every time. Uh, tobacco is awesome too. E cigar versus real cigar. So I like vaping sometimes. Um, I don't do it as much now but um yeah it's very different they're completely different worlds you know it's just like pipe smoking is very different than cigar smoking um but yeah they both can be enjoyable i think e-cigarettes and vaping is good for quitting smoking whereas the cigar and pipe are more just enjoyment 
But you can enjoy vaping too, like I do. Cody says, have you ever tried an Excalibur cigar? I have. I've got a lot of, I got like six or seven of them still. They're very old. And I think they say 1066, which I guess is the year, uh, something to do with the year. I don't know. They're really old. They're like, honestly, they're 20, they're almost 20 years old. Cause I got them in 2011 or 10. And then the guy before me had them. He said his dad had them for like six or seven or eight years. And then who, who you know, they're probably on the shelf for a year or two. And so they're pro they're really old, and they're super brittle, even though they're they're in good shape. They're they're just old. I was taught a really nice herb blend, two tablespoons of thyme, one tablespoon of dried blackberry leaf, and for flavor, a half tablespoon of lavender. Interesting. I've only done, I've only smoked mint, but um, people are doing herbs a lot, you know, just trying out herbs, I guess, is its own community. Um, let's see here. I've tried Victor Sinclair before. Yeah, so Victor Sinclair, I've had something from them, I forget what. Base, not filler. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Well, yeah, it's not as good on ice, but it's enjoyable. Here's a quick tip when you're smoking a pipe you can cover the top, you create a little back pressure, and then you let go of it. And what happens is it kind of helps it burn better. It kind of relights it. Kind of helps oxygenate it a little bit. So when you see old men in a park and they're fiddling like this, it's because they're actually trying to keep their light, their pipe lit. Just a little trick, a little pipe hack. Um, have any favorite cigarillos? I occasionally like a CAO Moon Trance. Uh, that was the first cigarillo I reviewed was a CAO Moon Trance. It's one of my oldest videos. I enjoyed it quite a bit actually. Um, and I don't really like flavored cigars, so uh, that was pretty good actually. Um, pretty much any cigarillo I like because I know that, you know, it's a short thing and I just, I know I don't really buy cigarillos, but generally I'm like, okay, this is just a nice little flavored thing or, you know, this is just a quick thing that someone gave me and, um, so yeah, recently I've been cutting my cigars in half and smoking each half separately like a cigarillo. That seems to work great too. If you guys saw last time I did a live video, I was cutting my Nicarusticas in half. And that was really weird, and I can't believe I did that. But it tastes great, so. Mutton Chop Piper has a cool pipe YouTube channel if you don't already watch this video. Yeah, Mutton Chop, he, he came up uh, pretty recently, you know, two or three years ago. He's a really cool guy. Um, him and Stuff and Things kind of really blew up. Um, and put and mutton shop piper he's he's really good at talking to his fans and and sticking to only pipes you know if i did only pipes in my channel um that'd be pretty awesome um that's what i should do i should have a cigar channel a pipe channel a mattress channel cbd channel this channel or that channel because i got like a million hobbies but i just i can't i don't think i could manage like 10 different channels uh i saved my cigar nub for a pipe load if it's a good cigar yeah I've done that before too you can put your cigar right inside your pipe
yes, stuff. If you guys want to learn more about pipe tobacco and pipes, check out Mutton Chop Piper and Stuff and Things channel. They're, they got killer stuff. And I'm also a huge fan of Dagner's. The Dagner's make pipes, and they're just a cool family. Cigar Obsession has good cigar reviews, yep. Yeah. I talked about that guy last week, if you guys remember. <laughs> My weird story of him. Mm-hmm. Okay, what else here? Mm-hmm. He's all right, but I stopped watching him. Yep. Yeah. And I actually don't really watch... Oh yeah, Dagner Pipes is killer, dude. I actually don't really watch a lot of that content anymore because I just kind of find it boring. You know, it's like... Maybe I just got burned out on it. And I, you know, I, I end up making my own videos a lot. So, um, it's, it's just kind of like, you know, it's hard to keep up with all of it, you know. They're still cool. getting hot out here. Mm, not a great combo. Not a bad combo. Not a good combo. Okay, let's see here. I remember when shops were allowed to sell you single cigarettes for like 20 pence. I don't think I've ever known that. Hmm, maybe that's only in the UK, maybe. Hmm, 20 pence is, how many pence is a cent? How many cents are in a pence? In a, hmm, is that like a bit? <laughs> uh, I watched a lot of reviews when I first got into pipes and cigars. Me too, like that's how you get really into it. That's how you learn a lot. And then once you kind of find your groove a little bit, then you, I found that I don't really watch a lot of it because I kind of know what I like and I started to refine my palate. And over the over time, you just kind of figure, oh, okay, it's just the same stuff over and over. Oh, let's see here. Nick the Smoker has a nice cigarette channel. Huh. Yeah, I don't smoke cigarettes, but you could. Yep, no, when I was a teenager, I would buy single cigarettes from the Indian guy down the block. <laughs> Well, okay, when I was growing up, my friends would go, all the gas stations had these, uh, it was a plastic box, a plastic case, or not case, box of cigarellos. It was a plastic case of cigarellos, and they were on the counter, and they were called Al Capones. And they were, what they called them, they were called cognac dipped. And I guess the rumor is that Al Capone would dip his his cigars and, and cognac. Um, so they were flavored with cognac or dipped in cognac. They were not they were not good at all. But um, my friends would buy them and you know you could pass one of those little things around. And then they kind of made like a cigarette version of that. And then a lot of my friends were into um, they were called black, black cigarettes. And they were literally like a black cigarette and they had this sort of clove flavoring to them. And those smelled really good. Like I don't even like cigarettes. But those black ones smelled really good. And um, um, so those were like the hip ones, you know, the, the black. And um, we had uh, Al Capone's and black, those were popular. And then we'd always buy these like cherry um, Swisher sweets, which were just terrible, but we liked them because they smelled good. And um, we'd always go to like these Eddie Money concerts and people would be smoking cherry Swisher sweets with the wood tip on them, you know, um, or they would smoke black or Al Capone's. I don't know why. Yeah, clove cigarettes, exactly. Um, clove cigarettes are just weird. And you know it's not real clove, but they, they have a certain smell to them that smells like incense, you know? Let me see if I can get this closer. Let me see if I can... There we go. 
There we go. I'll tilt this down because I'm getting I'm getting kind of fat. I just want it. It's a good napping day today. That's what it is. It's a killer napping day. I prefer pipes to cigarettes because I love traditional side of things also. It's why I like real leather wallets. Me too. I like real things. I like tangible things. I like things that tell a story. Yeah, cloves are like incense. That's why people smoke herbs, you know. Uh, people smoke thyme and chamomile and mint and I guess cloves. And pipe tobacco like this, you know, it has flavorings as well. Hey, how's it going, high desert? We're enjoying a pipe today. We got 14 people watching. So far, if you guys don't know, we talked about watches, my, my, my watch collection here. We talked about my St. Patrick's Day pipe. We talked about how to get into pipe smoking and blackjack pipes and versus bones pipes. I'm drinking Glenn Levitt if you are just tuning in. And if you guys know, you probably know this already, but I really like orange bitters in pretty much any whiskey. That's pretty much it. Pete says, yes, it is definitely a great napping day, but I don't want to waste my weekend sleeping. Lord knows how busy the work week is. Yeah, dude, yesterday I was at, um, I was filming all night from like, I, I started driving at four and I got done around 10. And then, you know, today is like, hey, uh, I've got three CBD videos I'm editing for my other channel. And then I'm gonna use that footage I shot last night and edit that probably next, you know, throughout the week. And then um, uh, we're, we have to film a Puffy. We, have, we got a new mattress called the Puffy. We have to film that review um, today. And then I, I got a weighted blanket I have, to fi I have to film. And so it's just a lot of little projects and you have to balance it because, you know, I, I do this part time still. And um, so you have to figure out, okay, who actually paid you to do the video do they have a deadline, you know? So priorities really happen, and with the limits of time we have, it can really suck. Okay, let's see here. Loving the pipe, thank you, Christina. It's a really cool little green pipe. And Desert Man, Christina. Oh, Christina's here. Christina's my number one fan. Uh, High Desert, check, check out High Desert Man. He's got, check out his website. Um, check out his channel, click on him. I'm sure you can go to his channel. But he makes like beard products. He also makes, um, well, I think like uh, goat milk soap or something like that. And he makes um, cigar boxes, I believe, of some kind. Uh, so he's got a pretty cool little side gig going on there. He actually lives in Arizona too. Between Pete, Christina, and High Desert Man, all those guys, they, they're pretty much on every video I, I've seen on, on my channel. So I really appreciate the support, guys. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the smoke chest, awesome kit. Yeah, so he has a smoke chest, which it holds like all of your accessories, and it's, it's like an ashtray, and uh, it looks really cool. So check that out. Let's see here. Yeah, he's got like... He has a, uh, oh, go ahead. He's got like um, a few acres up, up north in, in uh, Arizona. And I think he raises goats. And I guess they started making soap, I, I think, or I forget exactly how it works, but it's pretty unique. He'll have to explain here. But it's all handmade stuff.
Mm. We made more this weekend. Dude, there's so many cool people at it. Arizona is like the new hip place. It's it's super affordable. It's pretty good weather except for a few hot months. But if you have a pool, it's not it's not a big deal. Um it's it's kind of like California but cheaper. And um you know, it's just it's a pretty cool state. There's you can go up north and they have four seasons and come down here and you're in the middle of the desert and you can go to LA in five hours, San Diego in five hours, uh, Las Vegas in five hours, you can go to New Mexico in five hours, you could go to Mexico, uh, Rocky Point in like three hours or something like that. So you could do a lot within driving distance here and it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Like, for instance, like, we wouldn't be able to rent this house in Chicago. It would be way too expensive. But here, you can rent a house with a pool, and, um, you know, it's around 1400 bucks. And so, while that's not cheap, you get a lot with that, you know. You get a nice neighborhood. Um, so, you know, in Michigan, it would probably be, like, around two grand or something like that. So, yeah. Okay, guys, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that what the algorithm sees comments and it sees thumbs up, thumbs ups and it helps promote the the video. So, if you give it a thumbs up, that'll seriously help me a ton. And uh, it's really like the 14 or 15 people that watch these videos. These are like my core audience. Like these are like the people, like my super fans. So it's really a lot of you guys who help my channel out. So I just want to say thank you. Because um, a lot of you guys have been, been around a long time. So, oh, look at that. We went from like 7 to 11 likes. So thank you so much. Yeah, ser I mean, think about it. Um, you have 10,000 subscribers, right? But I would say I really only have maybe a hundred people who are like my core fans. And so these are people I really interact with. And um, you know, you guys are a part of that. And so um, you might not feel like super, like that's super significant, but for someone like me, who maybe eventually wants to do this full time, you know, it's because of you that I can do that. So a simple like or a comment on a video or engaging with me on Instagram, you know, these, these, this really adds up and this makes, you know, this makes a community happen, you know. Uh, cheaper than what I'm used to. Okay, hold on, hold on. I missed a few. Arizona's my favorite place. Love it here. That's really nice. Cheaper than what I'm used to. Yeah, so most other places in the country, um, you know, you're paying two to three grand for a decent house and it doesn't have a pool, you know. Um, if I if I were to buy this house, it's around two hundred thousand dollars, and you know your mortgage payment's like eleven hundred probably. So it's not bad. Let's see here. Cheers, everyone! Great channel. Thank you so much, Zim. Uh, let's see here. Love your content, man. You're a great guy that makes watching you relaxing. Thank you so much. Keep up the great work. Cheers to you, Cody. Uh, let's see here. The, the messages, they disappear quick. Uh, you're a good dude, man. My pleasure. See, that really encourages me because I hear a lot of cra uh, just crappy comments and, you know, there's just, there's a lot of negativity in the world and um, so hopefully I can be the guy that's just enjoyable and, you know, likes to share his hobbies and uh, create a community of people who like those same things as well. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. It really means a lot to me. Look at that, we have 16 viewers, 16 likes. That's incredible. Uh, James, you need to get some tiki torches and a tropical shirt, then you're all set. Then you're set for the spring kickback with a nice beverage and a cigar or a pipe. That would be nice. I'm gonna get tiki torch. Well, right there, do you see that? Those are my lights. So normally those light up the whole backyard in, you know, at nighttime, because we have those lights. We have this umbrella. I, I, I did a review on this umbrella, and it's killer because it has lights, uh, LED lights built in 
Then we have porch lights over there. So this backyard gets lit up really nice. Um, good times, teen tobacco. Uh, I'm paying 2,400 for a three bedroom, two bath, no pool. So that's my point, like, even though it really sucks in the summertime, there's no, there's no, we don't have any snow. Uh, the roads are great here. Traffic is, de it's decent. Um, and you know, you get a lot with your money here and you know, pretty soon we're going to start investing in real estate, I think, because we see this area growing a ton and, um, yeah, so it's, it's a great place. Um, that's the spot. Love your channel. You're not concerned. You're not conceited or arrogant like some others. Yeah. So that's what I was talking about last week. Uh, cigar obsession, for instance. Um, he he kind of gives me that vibe and when I first reached out to him in 2010 when I was starting You know, he didn't respond and then he blocked my channel. It was kind of it was kind of awkward And so it just kind of felt like he's above everyone else or you know, and that's not really community building um, that's not really uh, You know the, the internet I, I always tell people this the internet is big enough for everyone so you know, he's not really my competition. Um, he is, I see him, at, you know, I, you know, Tim and, and Brad, for instance, they, they have really successful channels. And that doesn't mean that I can't have success too, you know, like they're not my competition. I see them as great friends and um, colleagues. And, you know, so if they win, I win. And if I win, they win. And, you know, the internet is, the internet is huge, so there's really no need to be conceited. Um, when it, when I, I did a video of my parents' house, and it's a beautiful house, and there's a few videos of us riding jet skis, and you know we're on vacation, and I had so many hateful comments about that because people see success and they just think that they they just they have assumptions that you're. A certain way and I'm like we're not like that <laughs> you know <laughs> I hope we're not like that um, central oh yeah yeah he's in central Phoenix and they, they get snow there so that's like Prescott Prescott Valley Flagstaff he's so whiny who's Hadley I hate when he talks to people on CO fan page huh I've never been a part of that CEO fan page. He probably blocked me already. But, you know, it's okay. Whatever, to, to each their own. You're not gonna like everybody you work with or that you know. They're not gonna like you. Um, it's just how it goes, you know? And, you know, I, I have other things going on. Like, I have a full-time job, and I, I do brand deals with, like, coffee companies and mattress companies. And, you know, so um, for me, cigars are just purely, they're just, it's just a hobby, you know? I, I, like, I like sharing. It's my passion. And so I really don't see, you know, I'm not in the industry, you know? I don't, I don't sell cigars. So... I don't, I don't mind telling you my real opinion, you know, and I'm also not picky. Like I, I generally, I, I like a lot of cigars and I, um, if I don't like the cigar, I generally, I don't talk about it because why would I waste your time or my time if, if I don't like the cigar, you know? Um, but people want to hear my opinion, so maybe I'll share it. But for the most part, like I don't care, you know, I just, we do the things that we love to do and um, so if this, beca if, if this channel or this thing, if it ever becomes not fun, then I'll probably won't do it, you know? So at the end of the day, it's, you have to really enjoy what you're doing. You have to, you have to love the process. And, uh, uh you know, we talk about bucket theory a lot in, in social work and things that fill up your bucket and then you fill up other buckets. And if you're not getting filled, then you kind of run on empty. And so this really fills my bucket, you know. Okay, there's a lot of comments. Holy cow. Uh, you're welcome, James. You and a wife are an amazing couple. Thank you, Christina. Uh, it's just me or do box presses make for better pictures? Dude, they do. I love box press cigars. I love the way they fit in my hand. I love the way they look. They don't burn as well generally, but 
But man, I love box press cigars. Uh, do you like Noam Chomsky? I don't know who that is, but tell me more. Uh, Hadley. Oh, Hadley. It's okay. Uh, only second live. I've watched pretty. I'm pretty new. I've watched a lot of you of your other reviews and videos. Thank you, Hadley. I really appreciate it. There's a lot going on here, and it's kind of random, so I might have to like narrow it down because you know I do this video and that video, and you know I'm basically like it's like vlogs, but it's also reviews, and so I kind of need to like narrow it down a little bit. But I really appreciate you watching. Let's see here. Uh, there will always be haters. Uh, Jordan says there, they will be haters. Yeah, so basically, if you know that you're, if you know that you have something, and you start seeing success, you start having haters, and uh, that's a good sign of success. Generally speaking, if you're doing something right, someone will say that you're wrong, and if you're in the groove, someone's gonna say you're out of the groove. And so that tells me that you, you're starting to see progress. You're starting to get noticed. People are starting to listen and they're either gonna love it or hate it. And that's just generally, that's just how life is, I guess. You can be very polarizing. And being polarizing is not a bad thing, you know? I listen to a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk. He's very polarizing. I listen to Grant Cardone, very polarizing. Um, I listen to a lot of different pastors and these pastors can be very polarizing. One pastor will say this, the other pastor will say that. And, you know, they can they speak in absolutes, you know? So yeah, o overall, if you're successful, you, you have haters. Uh, dude, the SEAL guy was rude to me too, sort of deal breaker knowing it was not just me. He does, he does have good reviews, but that's unfortunate. Yep, that's unfortunate. Um, let's see here. Uh, I have the problem of do I want to branch out to other content as well, or do I stay in my current lane? So generally speaking, if I were to re if I were to undo, if I were to redo things, I would create a separate channel for everything that I like, and then only put out that content for that channel because it's very difficult to have to build an audience when you like cigars, pipes, whiskey, watches, mattresses, like. You're not going to really build a, a, a fan base. Um, so I know a lot of people who have multiple channels and then they only put content out for that channel. Seems to work a lot better. Um, so yeah, I would do that. And if you have a small channel, don't worry because you can, you can start another one pretty easily. Um, and uh, so yeah, I, I, would, I would separate it out. I would, I would niche, you want to niche down and make that big. Uh, doo -doo -doo. But I, I, here's the problem. I like doing a lot of different things. I have a lot of hobbies. Um, I could seriously do a, a channel just on my daily life. I could do a channel on only pipes. I could, I could just talk about pipes. Um, I could do a channel just on outdoor furniture, you know? Um, yeah. Wait, I have haters and I have... I have haters and haven't had real success yet. So that means that you're polarizing. That means you got something to say and people are not gonna agree with you and that's great. That tells me that what you're saying, people are hearing. Uh, uh -huh. People would probably think I'm rude too, so, though. So, man, yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. Have you been to Bradley's new place yet? I have not. He texted me the other day and he invited me over and I need to go. <laughs> you know, it's pretty cool when Brad or Bra uh, when Brad or Tim text you. Like, I think that's really cool. Like, they actually care. And they're like, yeah, just come on by. Like, you, you don't have to film. If you want to film, you can film. Uh, you know, so it's pretty cool when Brad texts you and he's like, dude, come on over. Like, I think that's cool, you know. He's building a brand, he's building an audience, he's building fans, and he's actually reaching out to people with his cell phone. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it takes to build a business. Uh, and it makes me feel special. And that's, that's really how you build, that's how, if you wanna do anything with social media, real connection is, is how you get it done. Uh, let's see here, do you play any games? I don't play games. Uh, I just don't have time for it. Sometimes I'll play 
a few games on my phone, but not, not very much. Are you still rolling your own cigars? I do. I want to roll my own cigars, but I haven't. But I do have plans to do it eventually. It just takes a long time. It takes a long time. So let me move this because I'm getting a reflection. Let me see. If, oh, yeah, that's better. Okay. Let's see here. Dude, everyone tells me they love the cigar videos, the cigar rolling videos. So maybe I'm going to do more of that because that's what people want. I should give people what they want. I mean, I've got all the gear. Uh, Leaf only sent a whole starter pack with the Chaveta knife and the cap to get the caps going, the cap cutter. Maybe I should do that. It would take like a whole day. And I, I, I suck now because I haven't done it in a long time. Okay, let's see here. Love that lighter. Yeah. Here it is. Crocs. Crocs. That makes the, the ugly sandals. They make lighters, apparently. And I find these on Amazon for like five bucks. But then I go down to my dollar store. My dollar store has them, you know, for a dollar. And so I, when I go down there, I buy the orange ones and the yellow ones. Because I can see them at night time. And I just buy like five or six of them. And they fit perfectly in my lighter leash. And they kind of help prevent me from burning the bowl a little bit because I can kind of get in here a little bit better. Yeah, rolling, cigar rolling takes up a lot of space it can get kind of messy, and you want to really prepare the leaf. You know, it's not like you can just pull out leaf and start rolling. A lot of times it's either too dry or too wet. So you want to kind of like mist it with just the water and bring it up to, bring it up to humidity. But you don't want it too wet because if it's too wet when you're rolling, it can create mold later on. So you want the filler to be pretty dry. And then the binder and wrapper a little bit wetter so it's more pliable. And um, so, and, and it makes a mess, it makes a big mess. It's fun though, it's really fun. Dude, I cannot sell rolled cigars, cause I don't think, you can't really, I, unless you have a tobacco license, you can't sell cigars. And my cigars are not good enough to sell. They have, they have burn problems, they have flavor problems. They're good for me, and I can kind of learn from it, but I, you probably wouldn't enjoy it, to be honest with you. I mean, they taste fine, but I couldn't sell that. There, I got some Dominican Seco that tastes great. And I actually put it in a pipe. And that's, it's pretty good. If you sample each tobacco and, um, and then you um, and then you blend it. That's how a lot of people do it. They'll roll up one leaf, sample it. Roll up another leaf, sample that, and and then go. Okay, these would taste good together. and tobacco Eric he's right you can't sell tobacco it's super regulated like alcohol and if you get caught selling it without the proper work paperwork or the taxes you can get in big trouble and I, I, I could give it away to you though 20 grand I did, I did not know it would cost 20 grand that's crazy uh, I hope the flood in the states doesn't raise the I hope the flood in the states doesn't Raise the prices of tobacco. Huh, I didn't know we had a flood. Like in Virginia, you mean? Yeah, manufacturing, it takes a lot of manpower. It takes a lot of time. If you want to do it right, you have to do it, you have to do it constantly to get good at it. And but that takes time. 
So really, it's not, it's not as easy as just sitting down and rolling. Um, it definitely takes practice rolling cigars. Uh, fight the power. Oh, geez. Uh, Pete says, I'll donate. <laughs> maybe, maybe you could legally donate money for the cigar rather than paying for it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Or maybe you could send me cigars and we could do a trade. But I would feel bad getting good cigars and giving you my crappy cigars. Uh, James, have you ever smoked any of the Ave Maria? I have not smoked any yet. Um, I, I like the bands though. They got the A and the V on top of each other. Um, I'll be cheaper and it'll be cheaper than to outsource your cigar line to be rolled in Central America. It definitely is. And um, that's why I don't roll my own cigars, because I could buy a good cigar for like five, six bucks, and it doesn't take me an hour or two to roll it. And, um, you know, so it's just cheaper for me to buy good cigars than to hassle with my crappy rolling. And so at the end of the day, you're better off buying a box of cigars for like a hundred bucks than rolling a box of cigars. Um, if you got really, really good at it and you had high quality tobacco and then you could just roll like a lot, you know, you could spend a whole day rolling cigars, then maybe it would be totally worth it because you rolled a couple hundred dollars worth of cigars in a day. But most people can't spend a whole day doing that. And um, it takes a while to get good at it. Uh, let's see here. The Ave Maria Templar. Templar, it sounds good. The Filthy Hooligan, those are the cool barber poles people get for St. Patrick's Day. I know Christina's looking for them too. Probably enjoyed the first half, but the second half of the cigar I found to be sour and bitter. And normally when I have a sour, bitter cigar, I have to purge it a lot. And even then, it's, it's just all right. Dude, let's see. Since I watched your channel, I have purchased an Amori mattress, an AeroPress, and the Bamboo Handle French Press. My wife, uh, my wife here, my wife hears me say, James said. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we still use, I use the AeroPress more than the French Press. French Press is great, but I find myself like being like, man, it's just, the AeroPress is just easier and cleaner for me. But James said, that's funny. Uh, let's see, you can find a 10 pack of those cigar bid for $21. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm saying. I could spend $20 and get 10 cigars and they're pretty good. Like, um, so it's not worth my Saturday morning to roll my own cigars that may or may not be good when I could just buy someone's cigar bid that I know are good. And so, you know, it's just, that's how it works. You know, that's why we pay people to do things for us because it's cheaper and easier. Whoa, somebody sent $20, what? I've never had anyone send me money on a comment. Dude, Mark, dude, let's just give it up for Mark right now. This, this one's for you. I gotta like, how do I, how do I thank you? I, I should send you something, man. $20, that is incredible. Thank you, Mark. Oh, wait a minute, we need my whiskey. This one's for you, Mark. Well, thank you so much, man. That, that really made my whole Saturday. I mean, rock out. That really made my whole Saturday. Um, let's see here. Have you had a filthy... I've never had a filthy hooligan. Christina, down in the comments, was telling me I should get one. And I saw them on Cigar Bid, and they were pretty affordable. And um, I instead bought what I know I like. And what I know I like is the Nico Rusticas. Dude, well-deserved. Thank, Dude, Mark, you're a killer, man. I just made my heart skip a beat. That was awesome, dude. Um, that really made my whole Sunday. I said Saturday. I meant Sunday. <laughs> I was so excited I forgot what day of the week it was. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. It, and it pops up for me, and you can see it up here. And so it's just, that's cool. I like that feature. Um, let's see here. Well-deserved, dude, that's so cool. Um, see, it's people like that 
that really just help, you know, it just really encourages you to do, you know, what you love to do. So that's really awesome. And it pops up like in an orange thing. That, that's cool. Anyway, back to the pipe. Yeah, that's kind of what I, um, like my day job, I help kids get adopted. And it's like little things like, you know, that you do for the kids, like little things, like you take them out to eat and it just makes them, it makes their whole day, you know, for like going out to McDonald's, you know what I mean? Like it's stuff like that, like paying it for like to me, it's McDonald's to them. It's like, wow, this is really special, you know? And so, um, that kind of reminded me a little bit of, of that, you know, that feeling of like, wow, someone cares, you know? I think we're all looking for that, you know? Mark, I, I, I should send you some, some uh, coffee or something, man. Uh, dude, Mark is looking out, man, that's wonderful. Uh, that's an awesome job, dude. Yeah, dude, it's really cool. Um, if you saw my Instagram, the other day we were at a shooting range because one of the kids I'm working with, I found a family that is interested in fostering to adopt. And the guy goes, you know, I'm actually at a shooting range um, this, this week doing, um, it's a big shooting, it was a big competition he's a part of. And he says, if you want, you could bring the kid with me. You could bring the kid with you and meet me there and he can kind of see what it's like. And so here I am on, uh, it was Friday and this kid and I are just like, wow, this is really cool. There was 300 shooters there. And um, we're in the middle of the desert. And it was just really cool. Like, the kid was like, wow, I've never seen this before. He's never been around guns. He's never seen a competition like that. And you could just see him go, wow, this is, this is cool. And so it was stuff like that where I'm like, huh. Uh, let's see here. No need. Just keep to doing what you're doing. Dude, thank you, Mark. Uh, it's Christina. How is the filthy hooligan? I've been eyeing them for a while, but never had a chance to get them. Yeah, Christina, let us know how the filthy hooligan is, because if it's really good, I'm going to go buy some on Cigar Bed right now. trying to figure out my dad sent this USB microphone and it's super small and it folds up very nicely and it even has uh, a headphone jack right here so you can hear yourself you can monitor your audio I'm trying to figure out how I can connect one of these to a phone so that way I could have a nice portable live live setup here with a microphone I think that would be really cool so I think this only really works with my computer right now. Let's see here. Uh, I'm missing comments. Uh, do, do, do. It was good, but I felt it was similar to the Asylum Ogre. Um, I've never had the Asylum Ogre either. See, Christina know, knows more about cigars than me. Uh, I like them a lot. I've had, oh, Zim says I like them a lot. They have subtle flavors of champs with light citrus. I don't know, I have to light up one. My tongue on the exact flavors, huh? The ogre, oh hi man, desert, hi desert man says the ogre was awesome, so that means the filthy hooligan must be good. Uh, let's see here. I want to try the ogre. Sounds nice. Um, I actually tried. Um, it was called Swamp Thing. It was a you know the same green candela, but it had some Kentucky Fire Cured, and I love that cigar. Very different. Fire cured, but candela flavors. Pretty interesting. It's really nice. One of my husband's favorites. Huh. Yeah, so thank you so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out Cigar Bid right now and see, see what's up. A high desert man says he uses a blue snowball with his phone. USB automatically recognizes as the mic for your phone. Huh, so do you have to connect it to the power, the, cause this is USB, 
but would I connect it to the how do I connect it to the to the to the to the headphone jack or to the power jack I don't know I guess it would be connecting to the, the this you know the power cord I love how unique everyone's flavor preferences are totally true like for instance um, most people might not like one of the might not like this you know um, some people might think green pipes are disgusting why the heck would you smoke out of a green pipe doesn't make any sense um, so everyone's everyone's got different style man I've got the Blue Yeti mic upstairs, and I've heard this mic actually sounds better, or at least very comparable. So I'm wondering if I can connect this to my phone and then just set it up like right here so it sounds even better. You know, that's what happens when you have all this gear upstairs. I got tons of video gear, and, and um, sometimes it's just like, I just need something super simple, and I can run and gun with it, and I can just go, you know, like last night I was at this, I was at this, I was filming this event and I was like, you know what I need? I just need a tripod. I need, I need my camera on a tripod. That's what I need. So I put my gimbal that was all set up nice and my, my gimbal stabilizes the footage. You know, it helps keep it stable when moving. I screwed the gimbal on top of the tripod. Super simple. But all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I just really needed a tripod in that moment. So sometimes simpler is better. Um, you know, and the cool part about that is I can actually use the tripod, it, it extended really, really far, and I could use it as like a boom, uh, a sort of like crane, you know, so I could get really good aerial shots of people. James, that's so funny, you helped me pick out my first cigar order on Tim two years ago. So if I helped you, that was great, you know, that's the, um, that's, yeah, I'm glad I could help, you know, that's why I do, that's why I, I do this, you know, and it's fun exploring and trying new things. And it's actually kind of fun not knowing everything because then it leaves you a lot of room to be curious and explore. Uh, do you like Latakia? I love Latakia. I actually smoke. I've got Latakia upstairs in a whole leaf form. I actually, I, I've actually liked smoking it by itself, which is kind of weird, but it tastes great. Half Latakia, half Virginia. It's a killer mixture. And um, I like um, I like red Latakia, or red red Virginia, versus yellow Virginia. The red Virginia has a little bit more of a deeper, you know. So red Virginia, a tiny bit of yellow Virginia, and then Latakia is good. It's kind of creamy and smooth and smoky, and um, it kind it almost has like a saltiness to it. I don't know how to describe it. Latakia and the semi Oriental from Leaf Only is so good. Yeah, so Latakia, um, so Leaf only sells Latakia. They sell a few different Virginias, last time I checked. They sell uh, St. James Perique, which I guess is the only place that makes Perique. So if you buy Perique, it's a spiced type of tobacco. And uh, Eric, Eric from Tea, uh, Tea and Tobacco, he can tell you all about it, but I guess it is a, a parish of some kind or a church of some kind that would you know put this tobacco in barrels and so i guess it it comes from the saint james parish i believe so they sell that they sell a lot of kia they sell a few different different orientals they sell all kinds of cigar stuff you know cigar leaf they sell um they sell a lot so leaf only is pretty cool and man you could honestly smoke just like it sounds weird but i could smoke just red Virginia and it's good you know I've actually got red uh, I've had red not red lot of kit red Virginia and I've actually just put it into a cake and that was good um, it's kind of sweet um, so you could do that Perique is basically into put into barrels and it ferments for like six months yeah so that's exactly what Perique is like and when you feel it it almost has this like dirty dirt grit to it they put it and they stuff it in barrels and it's spicy in it um, it's what adds spice to blends. 
and um, it doesn't really have a lot of intricate flavors itself. So you just use it uh, sparing, very sparingly, but it still tastes good. It still has its own thing going. So ye yellow Virginias are brighter, more citrusy, um, and red Virginias are sweeter. Generally, um, I find that generally they have more, a little bit more complexity maybe. Mm-hmm. Cody says, have you ever been to Virginia? I have been to Virginia. Uh, I've been there for a few different things, um, like a few trips. Like, you know, I went to like DC once and then we, we visited parts of Virginia. Uh, you know, like Gettysburg, I think it was one of them. I think that's Virginia. We went to a few caverns in Virginia. Um, I've been there for a few different things. I've been to West Virginia too a few times, but West Virginia is not Virginia, is it? Uh, I think it tastes kind of fruity like a Concord grape. Interesting. Yes, interesting, yes. Holy cow, 96 minutes, we've been here a while. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if I should move because now I'm in the sun. We did this last time. We were out here so long, we ended up having to move. And you just, if, you, if you're sitting here, you just end up frying, basically. Okay, hold on. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Okay, hold on. Sit here. Here. Move this. Here. Okay, all right, all right. Hold on. Gotta move everything down. It gets hot. Man, it gets so hot in the sun. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. hold on. I'll, oh, you're sideways. All right, see you, Christina. Peace. Have a great Sunday. And uh, remember, um, you know, I, I think about this, you know, uh, what are like a, two, three things that you guys are grateful for, that you're thankful for? I think, you know, remember that before you go, because I've been trying to do that every day. Think of a few things I'm, I'm thankful for. Let's see here. This is cricket. Everything's crooked. Crooked. Okay. We're good. I think we need a little bit more whiskey. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. Okay. Uh, guilty pleasure. This sound right here. I love that sound. Okay, let's see. People are, people are still talking. People are still on. Okay. These glasses are polarized, so I can't see the screen very well. Hey, Pete, I'm thankful. Oh, so let's see. What, what are you guys thankful for? Pete says, Pete says, I'm thankful for every day. I look around me and see how unfortunate some others are and I think to myself I'm lucky and extremely thankful dude that is killer and um, you know that that's why we like um, we thank like we thank God for our food we thank God for our pool we thank God you know it's just so easy to just kind of forget um, the things we have we're so busy on like managing our lives that we forget everything that we have you know, it's just, it's, it's too easy. You know, the more things you have, the more they end up owning you. So you end up going stir crazy trying to manage your life instead of taking a step back and saying, man, I've got a lot to be thankful for, you know? Um, it's just, it's really cool doing an exercise like that every day.
Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you guys don't know, without being too... Oh, geez, the sun is hot. Okay, hold on. If I lean back... If I lean back, baby, lean back. Okay, I'm out of the sun. Sort of out of the sun. Oh, you can see my grass. I cut it. And look at that. It's already... It already needs to be cut. This is... We've had a wet winter here. And you can see... There needs to be there needs to be rocks right here, but I don't own this house, so I can't buy rocks. I could buy rocks, but I won't. The grass is bad. If it were me, I would just put rocks over this whole backyard. But whatever, whatever. That's what I said. Whatever. Okay, hold on. If I if I move over here. Okay, I'm taking you with me. Okay, I'm taking you. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, there we go. And the sun is hot. Okay, this is the thing with my, my Glenn Levitt. Generally, with any cigar, with any whiskey, this is Glenn Levitt, standard 12 year. I buy this at Costco. And um, I heard they're not going to make this anymore soon. But. I, I always buy Glen Levitt because I think it's a good basic whiskey. And um, this is Angostura bitter, Angostura orange bitters. Basically, it's just like somehow they get orange flavor. It's slightly sweet. It kind of has the orange peel zest, but it's sweet. And so this is killer in almost every whiskey I have. I put a few drops, just like two or three dashes. When you're dealing with bitters, they don't, they call it dashes. So you just, you know, a few dashes and man, it's good. It's very good. It really brings out the orange flavors that might already be in your drink. So that's what I like to drink. And then I put it in a Glen Karen glass. I think I did a video on this before. I'm pretty sure I've done a video. So this is kind of like, kind of my go-to. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Pete gave a thumbs up. Okay, let's see. What else am I missing here? I'm trying to get comfy doing these things. Let me just get comfy. Gotta get comfy. <laughs> I think we're almost done. We've been doing this an hour or 102 minutes, which is like... An hour and 40 minutes. Hour and 42 minutes. That's a long time. Do you guys have any last questions before I get going? Mm. Man, I can't, I can't have a pipe and do a video because I end up neglecting the pipe. You would like the Whiskey Channel, the Whiskey Tribe YouTube channel. I love the Whiskey Tribe. They're they're cool guys. They started their own distillery off of a Kickstarter, I believe. Dude, the Whiskey Tribe is awesome. Um, they have two channels actually. I forget the other channel, but it's like vlogs mixed with whiskey. It's killer. They review good stuff. One of them is a sommelier. The other one is the Mooch. So I think that's killer. Like you have like this sort of like, you know, duo. That's killer. I like that channel a lot. Let's see here. Next live video, maybe next Sunday. Next next weekend is my birthday weekend. So I don't really know what's going on, but I hope to do one every week. Let's see here. Yes, sir. Good hangout though. Thank you very much, Pete. Mm-hmm. Cody. Cody asks, what would be your birthday cigar? I'm thinking I gotta smoke the Zeno. I got this Davidoff Zeno I've had for a long time. I gotta smoke it. It's ready to be enjoyed. The Davidoff Zeno. That's what I'll be smoking. Let's see here. 
Hopefully my sickness clears up quickly. Yeah, so hopefully I'm gonna do a, a hangout with Eric from Tea and Tobacco. And hopefully you guys will see more like, you know, hangouts with people, more dialogue. And uh, hopefully it's more engaging. And check out, check out Eric's channel. He's got, I think, 6,000 subscribers. So he's been doing this a while too. And he specializes in tea. You know, whole leaf tea, specialty teas. Um, the other day I even saw that he has a, a tea cake. You know, like the old school. I guess it's old school style. Um, so he knows a lot about tea and tobacco. All right, my good people. This is my stop. Have some yard work to do before the end of the day have a great day thanks and yeah i think that's it i think we're all done if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments below and as always thanks for watching and i don't know what to say <laughs> and peace